Hello booktubing world, it's I, Capri Nicole, and I'm back with another video without my glasses or my contacts, so I can't really see if this video is in focus. If it's not, I do apologize, but there is nothing that my blind ass can do about it. So we're just going to have to deal with it if it's out of focus. And I'm also sick, so let's get into the video so today's video i will be doing my august wrap up and in august i read a ton of books mainly because of booktubeathon was mm, yeah i think booktubeathon was in august it was in august and i had a ton of books that i ended up reading because of it a lot of books in august i listened to audiobooks while i was at work so i got a ton of books done for this month a lot of them were short some of them were long in between so let's get into it for the lovely month of August, I read, wow, it's August? But that's so crazy, though. The whole year is almost gone. Anyway, so for the entire month of August, I read a total of 15 books, and those books I will list starting now. I read The Astonishing Color of After. I read Love is Love, which is a comic book. I read Down Among the Sticks and Bones. I listened to Amazing Peace by Maya Angelou. I also listened to It's Not Over Until You Win by Les Brown. I think it was Les Brown, yeah. I also listened to American Panda. And I listened to Dear Ajuele. I finished up Renegades, which took me forever. I read Snot Girl for Booktubeathon. I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe also for Booktubeathon. I read If You Come Softly also from Booktubeathon. I read Maya Angelou's Book of Poems during Booktubeathon. I read Leave Your Mark during Booktubeathon. I listened to Every Heart a Doorway during Booktubeathon. So those are all 15 books that I read for the month of August. For the books that I read during Booktubeathon, I am not going to review because I've already reviewed those books. So if you have not checked that out, I will leave it in the description box below or I will tag it into this video so you can check it out so seven of the books that I listed I will not be talking about I will be linking in this box or in the description go check that out if you want to before you check this out and then come on back let's get into these reviews shall we so one of my August reads was The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan well The Astonishing Color of After follows the main character Lay I think her name is Lay uh, it's either Lay or Lee Lay Sanders whose mother committed suicide and she's like 100% sure that her mother is a bird. Like she is 100% sure that her mother turned into a bird and she ends up going on this adventure to where her mother grew up and meeting her grandparents and trying to find her mother to understand the note that she left behind. This story pretty much dips and dives into depression, which is a really hard topic, but it was really beautifully done. And she's just on a mission to speak to her mother and follow the signs and the memories that she's given her to see what it leads to. So let's kick it off with my normal list. If you are not used to my wrap-up videos, I do have a little list that I follow. And if you haven't watched my other wrap-up videos, please go check it out. I will leave them in the description box below. So let's kick it off with things that I liked. So, <sighs> man things that I liked about this book. The Astonishing Color of After, I loved the cover. I liked that there was magic realism in there. I liked that there was diversity in there. I liked that um, the mother and the father were of different races. I liked that the girl wasn't your typical, stunning, beautiful main character. She was different from the way that her parents looked and she felt like she didn't really fit in. I liked the family aspect of the book. I liked seeing like how each family was completely different. I liked the way that depression was tackled in this book and I liked the way that it was just spread out for us to see and for us to understand. I loved the emotion that was brought into this book. I loved the magic that was kind of added into this book, like the spirituality in this book. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed one of the parents being a fly-in, fly-out dad. You don't really see too often, so he, he worked outside of the state and he would fly in, fly out. I really enjoyed the best friend aspect. I enjoyed the colors being added into the conversation. I enjoyed a lot of things about this book. I really, I really did enjoy this book for the most part. Okay, so let's go ahead and dip and dive into things that I did not like. Okay, so this book for me, don't come at me with the torches, okay? You know, try to be understanding my opinion, but this book for me, I feel like was overhyped. Like, I was expecting so much more from this book. I, I feel like... You know, a lot of the people in the book community are super artsy and they're really into, you know, dipping and diving into different emotions and understanding different things, which is cool, which I have no problem with, 
but for me, I was expecting more from this book, and um, a lot of people were saying it was magic realism in it, and I feel like it wasn't magic, I feel like it was a spe more of a spiritual thing, because people do practice this thing in their culture, and I don't feel like it was magical, because the bird, which is her mother, um, wasn't added into the story that much, so I don't feel like it was a super magical experience. There were um, some time time traveling aspects in it, which does kind of make it, I guess, magical, but I feel like it was more of a spiritual connection. And I also got kind of tired of the... Uh, people are gonna hate me for this. <laughs> I also got kind of tired of like them adding in the co her adding in the color to everything. Oh, I felt a misty blue, or oh, the sky was a dark gray, teal, something. It was just too much. Like every emotion, every description, every conversation was changed into a color. And at first, I was like, this is kind of cool. Like this is interesting. This is different. But. As I got further into the book, like 300 pages in, and it still was going on consistently, I was like, when when are we going to wrap the color thing up? Like, I get the color thing is the theme of the book, and I get that the color thing is like the whole aspect of her being an artist, and all these things, and just for you to be able to connect to her more emotionally, but really it just kind of got aggravating after a while. I was just like, alright, so when are we going to stop comparing everything to colors that I don't even know? Like, it would be colors like it was a the magenta or something something that I don't even know what that color really is like if you say black yellow orange blue purple I got you but when you're talking about deep deep colors where they have more complicated names that I don't understand I'm not gonna really uh, you know catch on I'm gonna know it was a dark color because it was a dark time so I'll draw that connection but it was just too much like it, the, the whole color thing was just like overused I was like when are we gonna stop doing this when I also didn't like the way that the main character spoke to her parents. I felt like she was really rude and she was very disrespectful. I never swore at my mom growing up because I would have lost a few teeth and I would never imagine my children talking to me the way that she did in some of the scenes. Granted, her emotions were on high. Sometimes it was understandable what she was going through, but it was just like, okay, who are you talking to? <laughs> like, who are you talking to? I was just like, you're talking to your parents like this is this is coming out of her mom I would have to look almost every conversation she had with her father I would have to look for the quotes because I'm like okay we all say things in our head to our parents but like is she saying this out loud like I was really just like she's really saying this to him like she was swearing and all these attitudes and oh uh, she was a little bit too much for me like the main character was just like but it's understandable because of everything that she went through and how she grew up and how her father wasn't really around that much. It's all understandable of the person that she is, but it still didn't change the fact that she kind of rubbed me the wrong way in a lot of situations, so I was just like, uh, okay, push through. You can get through this. So, yeah, there was that. And I felt like it was just too dragged out. I was like, alright, so when is she going to meet her mother? Like, okay. We're doing all these back flashes. And then for the whole epiphany of everything, just to be like, she, her mother really just wanted to remember, pretty much just remember her. Like, remember the good times, remember the bad times, remember everything. That was the whole surface of this book, which is like, cute, if it would have been like 200, 300 pages, but we talking about like, almost a 500 page book. So I kind of was just like, why was this dragged out for so long? It was just, it was a bit much for me. I was just like, okay. And then I didn't like the best friend slash lover interest. I felt, I, I liked them together, but I didn't like the random girlfriend that he ended up acquiring into the story and how she ended up, it was like kind of like an unnecessary girl hate going on there and I was just like why why is she included why is this a thing it was pointless the whole the girlfriend that was in there was just like why is she there? but for me honestly I feel like the book was overhyped it was a little bit too overhyped it was a good book it wasn't terrible but it was just like okay did you really live up to your standards for me no how long it took me to read this book so it took me about two weeks to finish this book 15 days so it was just about two weeks to finish this book um, I was trying to just soak it all in I was taking my time with this book I'm pretty sure I was multi-reading with this book I think I was like alternating between this book and another book 
so that's why it took me so long. Do I recommend this book? I do recommend this book. It wasn't a terrible read. I did enjoy it. The emotional aspect of it, um, the harsh topics they tackled was very interesting to me. I do recommend this book if you do like um, understanding other religions and understanding depression and understanding you know, having a little bit of magic realism in there. I mean, if you're a little bit of an artist, I feel like you will connect with this book more. So yes, I do recommend this book. How many stars I gave this book? So for me, I gave this star. I gave this star. For me, I gave this book three stars because, yeah, for me, it was good, but it wasn't like I was foaming at the mouth over it. It was just a little bit too long and it was a little bit too drawn out. So for me, three stars is all it's gonna get, honey. The next book that I read for the month of August was the comic book Love is Love, which is a comic that is based off of the topic of the tragedy that happened in the Pulse nightclub with the gay community. And this comic book, all of its proceedings, um, goes to LGBT community charities. All of the stories in the book are surrounded by that night and by um, the gay community and understanding the LGBT community, which was really beautiful, really beautifully done. They're all um, different stories. Every page is every almost every page is written by a different author and, and drawn by a different illustrator. So it was really interesting to see different people's views and some of them were just like normal people that really just wanted to con contribute to a tragedy that happened and I really, really enjoyed this comic book. So the things I liked, I love that it was a comic book. Like I love that it was something that you can just like flip through and read and see people's views on something from all all over the world like these people were these people were all from the same place and they just gave their opinion on the topic and they drew their own story and it was just really beautiful it was nice to see them tie into tie in their experience into the the tragedy that happened and i love the colors and i love the the message that was given and everything that it stood for i thought it was amazing and i feel like everyone should read this book Things that I didn't like about this comic, I don't really have too many, but oh, my only thing was a lot of the, or a few of the comics had superheroes that were added into it, and for me that just wasn't my favorite. I really liked the ones that were more realistic and had um, <coughs> um, real life people in, in the comics and things like that. Like I didn't really connect as much with the superhero ones because I didn't, I never, I don't really know all of the superhero comics, so I didn't really understand all of it, and I feel like if I would have known who the characters were, then I would have drawn more from it, but for me, that's just one thing that I didn't like too much. How long it took me to read this book? It took me a week to finish this book. Um, I took my time through it because I wanted to just look at all the pictures and engulf myself into all the stories and just really love on this book. Do I recommend this book? Absolutely. If you are in the LGBT community, or if you are not, or if you want to have understanding of the tragedy that happened, or if you want to have the child understand the tragedy that happened, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend this comic. It was beautifully done. It was well executed. It was just, I loved it so much, and I really want to read it again. So yes, I do recommend it. How many stars did I give this book? I gave this book four stars because it was just, I keep saying beautifully done, but it was beautifully done, okay? Like, don't judge me. It was a great book. I really loved the read, and I just, everything about it, everything that stood for it, it was just, like, amazing. So, yes, four stars. The next book that I read for the month of August was Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sheena McGuire, and this was the second book that was after Every Heart of Doorway, which I absolutely loved, and I read during Booktubathon. Um, they're really short books, and this book follows two of the main characters, Jack and Jill, and their story of how they got into the magic realm that they were in. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the first book so that you can understand what I'm talking about. So in the first book, it follows a ton of kids that experienced going into a different world, um, like Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe, or like Alice in Wonderland, something like that. They, they found a way into a world and they experience something, but then they end up going back into the regular world. And all they, most of them want is to go back to the world that they were from because that's where they feel like they're most connected to. And in the first book, um, they end up <clears throat> staying at this boarding house full of kids that experience the same thing as them. And they're trying to just talk about it. They're not trying to overcome it and forget about it, but they're just talking about everything that they went through and how to grow from it, how to learn from it, and all of them went from to different places and experienced different things, and they're all different, and it's all very diverse, and it's all very 
deep, low key. Like you have to catch in. This this book is very woke. Like you have to catch on to some of the quotes that is just like very subtle but very true. And I love this book because it was short, it was quick, it was diverse, and it got kind of dark, it got kind of twisted, there was some death stuff in there, it just, it got crazy. So, yeah, that was the first book. And the second book follows two of the main characters, end up going to a, a different world, and they end up being split up and pretty much raised by two different characters. One is a very mad scientist um, who Jack stays with, and the other one is a vampire master. Who Jill stays with and it just is about their experience and things that they go through and stuff like that and that book is just I loved it I loved every second of it it was just the best so let's get into the review so things I liked I liked the honesty of this book I liked how short it was I liked the topics that it dove into about parenting about um, growing up as a child about everything like it was just so many like low-key woke quotes that I was just like yes please get into the conversation it was just so good so I um, I love the world I loved how dark it was I love how um, different it was and how it tackled myths about girls and how girls should be and what girls should do and stuff like that it was just a, a really good book and it was a really quick read and I connected so much with the characters um, Jack personally is my favorite and um, I really enjoyed their relationship and just seeing the villainous ways of certain characters that I will not mention but I really enjoyed this book. I love that it was quick, I love that it was dark, I love that it was twisted, I love the main characters and yeah. Things that I didn't like. Um, I can't think of anything, I can't think of anything that I did not like. I wish they were together for a little bit more of the book but I can't think of anything I didn't like. I didn't like when it ended because <laughs> I wanted more. I was like, give me more of Jack and Jill. How long it took me to read this book? It took me about five or six days, so just uh, almost a week. But um, like I said, it was a short book, so I finished it pretty quickly. Do I recommend this book? Yes, I recommend this book. But first, you have to read the first book, and then you can head on down to the second book. Stars. I gave this book four stars because I loved it and I really enjoyed it and it's obviously going to be a favorite. I really just want to read all of the books and then go back and reread them with everything that I know and just catch on to more and more and more. And I definitely have to buy a physical copy of the first one because the first one I listened to on audiobook so I did not have a physical copy but the second one I did buy a physical copy and it was a used book so I was super happy about that cheap purchase. The next book that I have is Amazing Peace by Maya Angelou and this book I listened to on audiobook so the next few books that I have I did listen to on audiobook so I'm just going to review that. This book is pretty much a little wrap up of some of Maya Angelou's poems and some of Maya Angelou's thoughts and it's all narrated by her which I absolutely live for. Things I liked. I liked how short it was. I absolutely love Maya Angelou's voice. It's so powerful. It's so beautiful. I love listening to her sing. I love listening to her stories. I just feel like she's like a mom that I'm just, or a grandmother that just like tells stories and you just like curl up and listen to them. I absolutely loved listening to this audiobook. Things that I didn't like. I can't think of anything I didn't like other than some of the poems in there I've already heard before, I guess. But that's not something that I didn't like. I, I still did enjoy the books even though I've heard them before. So nothing. I don't have anything that I didn't like. How long it took me to read? Because this book was an audiobook and because it was short, it only took me a couple of hours to listen to it. Do I recommend this book? Yes. I absolutely recommend listening to her poems because a lot of the poems that are done by her, you just connect them, connect with them better when you hear her speak and stuff like that. Just listen to her voice is a completely different experience. So yes, I recommend the audiobook. I recommend that you listen to it and then you just enjoy her soothing stories. How many stars? I gave this book four stars because I did enjoy it, I loved her voice, I loved the quickness of it, and I just loved all of the aspects of the storytelling and the poems. The next book that I have is It's Not Over Until You Win by Les Brown, and this book I also listened to on audiobook by Scribe. So this audiobook pretty much is a storytelling experience of Les Brown and um, how he overcame a lot of trials and tribulations that he experienced, a lot of just storytelling and um, listening to how he kept himself motivated 
kept his um, growth, his financial growth, and his spiritual growth, emotional growth, everything. And um, because I am starting a business, I want to just soak in all the motivational conversation, all the motivational books, and just things like that, because I really enjoy hearing from other business people's point of view, and I love hearing their stories, and I love hearing the things that they went through and how they overcame them. So things I liked, I liked the honesty in this book, I loved his voice, his voice was so powerful and um, it was very animated and it was very realistic, everything that he went through and all the hardships and all the victories and just everything about it, the story was awesome, it was short, it was quick, it was very motivational and I took a lot from it, I definitely want the physical copy of this because I want to run through it again, take some notes, things that I didn't like, I honestly there's nothing that I didn't like about this book, I really really enjoyed it. How long it took me to read? So because it was an audiobook and because I was just listening to it and it was short, it only took me a few hours to listen to this book while I was at work. Do I recommend this book? Yes. If you need a little pick-me-up or if you need some motivation or you like stories, I definitely recommend that you listen to this book and just get some information, take some notes, sit down and curl up in a little cup of coffee or some tea and just enjoy this man's story. How many stars? So it is very rare, but I gave this book five stars because I just loved it. I really enjoyed his voice. I loved his laughter. I loved the way he told the story, which was his story. I loved his point of view, his um, just full of lifeness and just so much information that I took from him that was very motivational and um, I definitely enjoyed this book. And I definitely recommend that if you do listen to this book, that you listen to the audio book and also get the physical copy so that you could just experience both ways. So the next book that I listened to while I was at work, which helped me get through the very long, long day, was American Panda by Gloria Chow. So this book follows a main character by the name of May, whose family is very, very, very strict. She pretty much is having the Taiwanese American experience from a nightmare like her parents are very overbearing and they want her to be a doctor and they're, they're picking and choosing you know what she gets to do what she doesn't get to do and it's very tough for her because she does not want to be a doctor she wants to dance and she wants to live her life and she wants to do things that make her happy and it's very hard for her to go against that because she knows that her her family will disown her so it's just about her experience and her culture. She does not want to be a doctor because she hates germs. She's kind of OCD, which she might need to get checked out. But yeah, so she's going into a profession that she doesn't want solely because it's what her parents want. Things I liked about this book, I liked listening to it because I know for a fact if I read this book, there's a lot of things that I would not understand. There was a lot of Taiwanese conversations in there and it was just a better experience for me to listen to the dialect from someone that speaks it better than um, me reading the book and just like attempting to understand what's going on. A better experience listening to the narration of the book instead of reading it. I also, uh, I absolutely love the main character. She's funny, she's very relative and it's just like, it's, it's hilarious to read a book about someone experience, experiencing like parental issues and overprotective parents and parents that are trying to guide your life and you just trying to live your best life and just be a college student and just be the adult that you want to be and then they just keep dipping and diving in listening to her juggle all these things and juggle friendships and juggle family and juggle a little bit of dysfunction and her OCD and her trying to push something that is clearly not going to work it was just like funny it was hilarious um, the culture aspect of it was very interesting to learn from because I did not know that they were that strict and sometimes I don't understand why they're so strict on their kids but it was very interesting to see the background of this story. Stars! So I'm feeling really high with these stars I'm giving out. Clearly I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was truthful. I thought it was just an overall great experience and it was just like fun. It was a lot of character development, like seeing this character grow in this book in, short, in such a, sh a short amount of time but not feeling like it was too fast paced was perfect. The next book that I listened to was Dear Ajuele by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. So I absolutely love this author. I love how powerful she is. I love the things that she says. I have a couple of her books. Um, that I've read physically and so when I was just looking for a quick read while I was at work I found this book and I really really was happy that I listened to it so this book pretty much is a letter response that she gave to one of her best friends that was having a daughter and she asked her well, what how do I make my daughter a feminist 
and this is her letter response to her um, really dear friend. So she actually took that letter and turned it into a book, a, a very small book, which is pretty much just the same letter, but she adds a couple more things into it. And the things that she tackles is just like very well done. So things I like, obviously I'm a feminist, obviously I stand for all things that hung with equal rights and equal opportunities. So just the things that she said in this book, some things I agreed with, some things that really you know made me understand better and helped open my eyes to certain things that I didn't even realize before. And it was just a very interesting topic. And I love listening to her voice. I love listening to her opinion. I love the way that she just tackled every topic perfectly. And it was just like a great experience. How long it took me to read? Because it was a very short letter, slash not like novella it wasn't even like a novella it pretty much was just like a letter it took like a maybe like two hours for me to listen to it do i recommend this absolutely whether you are a feminist or not or whether you're just trying to understand more about feminism i definitely recommend that you listen to it it's a very quick letter and it's a very quick read and it, it tackles a lot of issues that people don't even realize that they're experiencing until you dive into this book so i definitely recommend that recommend that you listen to it or read the physical copy whatever you prefer. How many stars did I give this book? I gave this book five stars because I enjoyed it. It was quick, it was informative, it was powerful, it was knowledgeable, it was truthful, it was everything your girl needed during a pick-me-up at work. The next book that I read for the, oh my god, this, book, <laughs> this video is going to be so freaking long. Oh, I'm just thinking about editing. So the next book that I have for the month of August was Renegades by Marissa Mayer. And this book follows the main character, Nightmare, who was a part of a tragedy growing up, which leads her into being a part of the group of villains. And throughout this book, you have your main group of heroes, which are known as the Renegades. And their job is to pretty much fight crime get the bad guys you know just the typical hero thing there comes a point where she is given the opportunity to join the renegades and to pretty much try to overthrow their entire structure she's pretty much up undercover as a renegade and she's trying to just get as much information as she can to get her vengeance that she feels like she deserves and this follows the main character nightmare and the other main character by the name of adrian who is a renegade through and through he also has a secret identity so this pretty much follows these two main characters and all these secrets and all of these villainous ways hero heroic ways and the ins and outs of the structure of this community and the problems with this community and how they both want change. It follows the main character and how she's going to try to overthrow or soak up all the knowledge that she can by being a part of the Renegade group without them even knowing that she is a villain the whole time. So things that I liked about this book, so I alternated with this book between the audio book and the physical copy. First of all, I love this cover and I liked how different all of their powers were. I just enjoyed the adventure and I enjoyed the snarkiness, things that I didn't like. Okay, so this book I feel like was a little bit too long. Like I feel like it could have been like 200 pages less because I was just like, okay, get to the damn point. Like all these little, the plot twists at the end, I figured out mid book, I already knew what was going on. Just like reading the synopsis of the book, I figured it out before I even cracked the book open. So it wasn't really a big plot twist for me. I was just like, confirmed. The love interest was just like, uh, for me, it just was like, okay. I feel like the villain versus this hero thing was just like your typical storyline, typical everything about villain versus hero. It wasn't really too much different aside from the superpowers, superpowers which I felt was really diverse and really interesting. I feel like it was kind of just dragged out for too long. I was just like, okay, when are we going to end this book? Like, when are we going to get to the end? And I feel like uh, the, some of the main characters were just so naive. Like, I just didn't understand how they didn't figure out a lot of the things that were going on. I was like, why? why so yeah how long it took me to read this book so it took me <laughs> it took me three weeks to read this book but to be fair really it was really only two weeks because I stopped reading this book because I was only about halfway done with it when book Tupathon started so I kind of put this book on pause for a week so technically it only took me two weeks to read it so don't judge me do I recommend this book um I don't know I guess it depends on the person it depends on if you're a Marissa Mayer fan um, if I know the person is into like um, comic books or hero versus villain or so, you know they're they're okay with like fantasy books that are long, then I would recommend this book because it would be comfortable reading a thick book 
or I would recommend listening to the audiobook because it is well done. I did enjoy the, the male narration better than the females, but for the most part, yeah, I guess I would like halfway recommend this. I would just like, it depends on the person, okay? It depends on the person. How many stars? So I gave this book three stars. Um, it was good for the most part, but a lot of the things were typical, predictable, very drawn out. The characters weren't really that, I don't know. It was just like okay for me, and I'm hoping that, you know, as this, this, the um, story goes on, I hope that it gets better, and I really, really hope that Marissa takes this book and turns it into a comic, because I would love to see the characters as comic book heroes. Like, I really want to see, like, physically see them, so I'm hoping that's something that she does later on, and I know the next book comes out, and I'm hoping that it's not as long, because I cannot go through this again, so we'll see how that goes. The next seven books that I read for the month of August, I already reviewed, like I said in the beginning. I will put this up here again for you to click on my book to thon wrap up for the seven books that I read in the month of August. So I'm not going to be reading those from our little list today. I hope you guys enjoy this very long video because I'm going to be editing for days. Huh. I really enjoyed the month of August. It's crazy how many books that I read. Even Booktubeathon aside, I read a ton of books. Let me know how many books that you read for the month of August, if you did Booktubeathon and if you enjoyed it. And let me know if you read any of the books that I talked about in here. And if you recommend any books based off of the books that I read for the month of August, I would greatly appreciate it. So leave it in the comment section below and just give me a little feedback on the things that you read for this month and if you enjoyed all the books that you read. Always remember, read a book, keep your life interesting, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!